This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hi guys, welcome to Amateur Chemistry. So recently, I found myself really enjoying a drink called Dr. Pepper. For those who don't know what it is, it's just a cherry soda a little similar to Coca-Cola. It is really popular in the US and can be scarcely found in a lot of other countries. And when I first found a single bottle of it in a store, I instantly fell in love with it. It has this very nice chemical cherry taste, which is just perfect for a chemist like me. But I know that a lot of people really dislike it, and you can really just love it or hate it. Over some time, I saved a lot of empty cans of it just to show you my love for it. I also brought this giant pack of it just for this video, and it was really hard to not open it for a few weeks. Anyway, I didn't make this video only to show my love for Dr. Pepper, but also because I decided to make it myself, since as soon as I took my first sip of it, it reminded me of a pretty familiar chemical, which is benzaldehyde. Benzaldehyde is naturally present in a lot of things, and its smell is incredibly similar to that of Dr. Pepper, so I figured that if I managed to make some benzaldehyde, I could then make my own Dr. Pepper, which would be very cool. There are quite a lot of ways to get benzaldehyde, the easiest of them is just to buy it, but in some countries such as the US, it's at least one drug precursor which is pretty interesting, and it means that for some people, it is impossible to buy. Fortunately, in my country, it is perfectly legal, and I even have a bottle of it from an online chemistry supply store that supplies me with many chemicals, BM Chemistry. BM Chemistry sells a lot of hard-to-get reagents, along with laboratory equipment, glassware, and lots of other things, and you can check out their page, to which there is a link in the description. Anyway, I could theoretically use this benzaldehyde straight away, but since it is intended for chemical synthesis, it probably isn't too safe to consume, and I don't want my Dr. Pepper to be my last drink ever. The same problem applies to most of the conventional roads to producing benzaldehyde. They all include some nasty chemicals that I don't want contaminating my drink, but fortunately, after a great deal of research, I came across a route that maybe won't kill me. You see, a lot of the commercial food-grade benzaldehyde is produced from something called cinnamaldehyde without the use of any nasty chemicals. What's even better is that cinnamaldehyde is naturally present in cinnamon, and it is responsible for a great part of its characteristic smell. This means that if I somehow extracted it from cinnamon and chemically transformed it into benzaldehyde, I could make some tasty counterfeit Dr. Pepper, and as soon as I realized this, I went straight to work. To extract the cinnamaldehyde from cinnamon, I have to use a pretty interesting technique called steam distillation. I already made a video where I used it to make some lemon perfume, and the way it works is by boiling something in water and then condensing its vapor, which allows you to distill over things that normally would be very difficult to extract, and that is exactly the case for cinnamaldehyde. To begin the extraction, I brought myself these nice cinnamon sticks, and for this steam distillation, I have to turn them into a coarse powder, which I wanted to do using this grater or a mortar, but after like 5 minutes of trying to use either of them, I realized that this would take longer than the current age of the universe. So I did the only logical thing, and brought 2 kilos of powdered cinnamon. This is honestly a little too much for my needs, but I guess that it's better to have more cinnamon than not. Also, now I wanted to answer an important question that I have asked myself for months, and that is, does cinnamon make a good flamethrower fuel? Well, yeah, but with my current setup, it's very hard to make even a small flamethrower, and while trying to do that, I made my whole workspace become one with the cinnamon powder, and made my squirt bottle completely unusable. Anyway, after cleaning up this mess, it is now time to steam distill the cinnamon powder, and to begin, I started setting up my distillation apparatus, but then I noticed that my boiling flask still had some remains from the lemon peel incident, and now they have turned into this disgusting mold garden. I cleaned it by literally drowning the mold in concentrated sulfuric acid, which made everything heat up a lot, and produced this nice smoke. To finish obliterating the mold, I added some hydrogen peroxide, which in combination with sulfuric acid, 
make something called Piranha Solution, which just obliterates all organic matter, and after a few minutes, I was left with some nice and hot mold juice, which I then removed from the flask, and now it looks like it's new. Anyway, to begin assembling the distillation apparatus, I very thoroughly clean all of its parts to remove traces of any undesired chemicals that might contaminate the distillate, and filled the now clean boiling flask with 150 grams of the cinnamon powder, followed by roughly 400 milliliters of water. The cinnamon didn't really want to mix with the water, acting kinda like one of these hydrophobic powders. Even with some very strong stirring, it was still floating on top, and to fix that, I decided to add a drop of liquid soap to the mixture to help mix the water and cinnamon and reduce any foaming later on. I then finally assembled the distillation apparatus, set the temperature to a little over 100 degrees Celsius and put some aluminum foil onto the boiling flask for better insulation. After some time, the mixture started to lightly boil and at first I was really scared that it was going to start foaming, but because I added the soap, the foaming was almost non-existent and that made me really proud of myself. As the boiling flask got hotter, some vapor started condensing and dripping down into the collection flask, the distillate looked really cloudy, but that's because the cinnamaldehyde forms a suspension in water because of its similar density. Anyway, I continued distilling the cinnamon and periodically added more water so that it doesn't dry out, and after a few hours of distilling, I was left with about 250 ml of this milky cinnamon water. There was actually quite a lot of the cinnamaldehyde in it, and I could see a few droplets of it on the bottom of the flask, the whole thing also smelled quite nice, and overall I am pretty happy with how this turned out. The yield however isn't particularly high, from the amount of cinnamon that I used I expected to get more, but what I have should be enough for the next step. And speaking of that, I could now start isolating pure cinnamaldehyde from this distillate, but I came to the conclusion that in my case it is kind of pointless, because I don't need it to be pure, and during its isolation I would definitely lose a lot of it, and use some nasty chemicals that could contaminate it. On top of that, the next reaction had to happen in water with similar cinnamaldehyde concentration that I have here, so I figured that I could just use this straight away, and not worry about losing much of my yield. Anyway, now I have to convert my cinnamaldehyde to benzaldehyde, and this is actually done in just a single step. I have to react my cinnamaldehyde with some sodium carbonate, which is a really safe and family-friendly chemical, and is the main reason why I chose this route over the other ones. I already have a lot of it, but similar to the benzaldehyde, it is lab-grade and probably not safe to consume, so I have to make some myself. Fortunately, it is very easy, and I already showed how to do that in the basic copper carbonate video. All that I have to do is to get some good old baking soda and heat it up to decompose it into sodium carbonate, which should be perfect for the next reaction. To make the benzaldehyde, I got my cinnamaldehyde water flask onto a hot plate with stirring. I then added some more distilled water and got all of my freshly made sodium carbonate into the flask, which corresponds to about 3 grams, which is the amount I felt would be good for this reaction. After the addition, I set up a reflux, and its job will be to condense any vapors that rise from the mixture below, which I will have to boil for around 10 hours. In this reaction, the cinnamaldehyde under the presence of sodium carbonate and heat breaks down into my precious benzaldehyde and acetaldehyde, which has a low boiling point and escapes the mixture, pushing the equilibrium to the benzaldehyde side. Also, acetaldehyde is really toxic, so I did this whole thing under a fume hood, and when everything was running smoothly, I left this setup to run overnight. When the 10 hours were up, I disassembled the apparatus and let the flask cool down. I could see a few droplets of red oil floating on top of the reaction mix, and that should be some very impure benzaldehyde, along with some unreacted cinnamaldehyde, which is there because the reaction only goes to about 70% completion. To separate the oil from all the dirty water, I had to carry out another steam distillation, which fortunately shouldn't be too painful. To start, I set up my apparatus and turn on the heating, and after a while, I could see some vapors starting to condense. This steam distillation works nearly the same as the cinnamon one. The boiling water carries over the benzaldehyde-containing oil, while nearly all of the impurities stay behind. 
In the receiving flask you can even see some nice droplets of oil that look just fabulous. But there was such a small amount of them that I was really worried that I might not get enough benzaldehyde to make my doctor better. Anyway, when there was no more oil coming over, I stopped the distillation and was left with a small amount of some oily distillate. It smelled really nice and I could really notice the benzaldehyde in there, but there was also certainly some cinnamaldehyde present which gave everything a cinnamon-like scent and now it is time to separate the oil into its components. It can be done by vacuum distillation, but to carry it out I first have to get rid of all the water that's present in the distillate, some of the oil is also dissolved in it, so I have to get it out to improve my yield. To do that I dumped a lot of salt into the water to saturate it which increased its density and made all the oil precipitate and float up to the top. I then transferred everything into a separatory funnel, drained all of the salt water out and got the benzaldehyde containing yellow oil into the small boiling flask. I was really sad that I only ended up getting a small amount of it, but I really didn't want to repeat all the previous steps to get more, so I just said freak it and proceeded to the next step which is vacuum distillation. It allows me to separate the benzaldehyde from cinnamaldehyde by the difference in their boiling points and the vacuum is here to prevent the oxidation of benzaldehyde to benzoic acid which slowly happens through its contact with air. Ideally this should also be a fractional distillation but since I am working on such a small scale and my fractionating column is literally taller than my fume hood, I proceeded without it. Also I obviously need a vacuum pump for this and my one broke again this time because of this nice green stuff on it and just as I wanted to start fixing it, my dad came along for the millionth time and miraculously made it work which was really nice but I really need yes. to buy a new vacuum pump. Anyway, with the vacuum problem now solved, I assembled the distillation apparatus. It doesn't have a condenser because I only distill a tiny amount of liquid. I also greased all of the joints with this random engine grease, which isn't perfect but it's the only thing I've got. Before starting the distillation, I put some anhydrous calcium chloride into my boiling flask to dry the benzaldehyde and when that was done, I started heating the mixture up. I also covered the flask with aluminum foil and started the vacuum pump. After a few minutes the benzaldehyde started boiling and its vapors climbed up the apparatus. The whole distillation went rather quickly and in the end left me with mainly some tar and a tiny amount of benzaldehyde. It's just stupendously small, but fortunately I shouldn't need much more than that to make my Dr. Pepper, so I am just extremely lucky that the chemistry gods blessed me today because this whole synthesis could have been a total failure. When it comes to the yield, it is almost impossible to measure it, but I would say that it's probably around 40%, which I guess is okay. The benzaldehyde smells very strongly of a chemical cherry, oh. and now that I finally have it, I can begin to make my own Dr. Pepper. I got myself an empty bottle and added 100 ml of water followed by 21 grams of powdered sugar, and a tiny bit of pure caffeine that I extracted from pills in a previous video, I also added some vanilla flavoring and 10 ml of lemon juice because I ran out of citric acid. I then added a very small amount of my benzaldehyde that I felt was appropriate and mixed everything until the concentrated solution of Dr. Pepper was clear, then I added 200 ml of carbonated water or in a more chemical term carbonic acid. It could of course be substituted by using one of these fancy water carbonation machines, but they cost a lot of money and starboard carbonated water works just as well. I had to add it as the last ingredient because if any of the powders didn't dissolve, it would all just decompose and when everything was ready, I added some brown food coloring which ended up making everything look like peas, so I added some black one which made it look like crude oil and upon tasting it, the taste really fitted the color. Oh, oh man. Oh. It tastes almost exactly like a real Dr. Pepper, but has a pretty strong gasoline taste added to it, probably because of the engine grease. So after all this, I just made some tasty petroleum. But all jokes aside, if you don't count the gasoline note, it tastes really close to a real Dr. Pepper. So I declare this project a success. The next time, I just have to buy a better vacuum grease and go lighter on the coloring. Also, if you don't want to do all of this tedious work of turning cinnamon into benzaldehyde, you can just get some bitter almond oil which is nearly pure benzaldehyde and use it with the recipe I just mentioned, 
it tastes really good and makes for a delicious drink. Anyway, I really liked recording this project, it was really fun and I learned a lot doing it, and you can do the same thanks to the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. Brilliant is undoubtedly the best way to learn STEM subjects like math or computer science while being completely free and easy. It is an interactive learning site that lets you learn tons of easy or advanced topics in thousands of customized lessons that let you learn at your own pace. Their courses are always very interesting, for example their casino probability course that I myself took made me learn a lot of useful card strategies based on probability. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer completely free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash amateur chemistry or just click the link in the description. The first 200 of you to sign up using my link will get 20% of Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Anyway, I hope that you guys like this project and thank you very much for watching, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, also as always big fans go to my patreons, especially Isaac Von Liu, Dangerous Lab and Adam Fowler, as well as R2D2, Riley Reprogu, Joseph Cudi, M.I., William Bragely, The Nitrate and Miss Mad Scientist. If you would also want to support my work and gain access to exclusive content, you can consider becoming a Patreon and see you guys in the next video.